Okay guys, so in the last video you have learned about uh, Mohr circle, how to draw it for different stress condition, especially for bi -excel stress system. And in this video, I will talk about a particular stress system which generate your pure shear. Okay, so let's start. And this video is going to be quite noisy because it's raining outside and I'm sorry for that. So let's start. To understand or to discuss about your pure shear, okay, pure shear concept. We again need to consider a system, let's say this one, okay, which is under the action of biaxial stress, but here the stress is quite special, okay. To understand pure shear, we will apply biaxial stress in x direction. This is, of course, let's say this is sigma and it is tensile in nature, so it is positive, okay, but along y axis, we will apply compressive stress okay and the magnitude is of course sigma but it is negative in nature okay so now if i ask you to draw the Mohr circle for this stress system i think you can draw it so first pause the video and try to draw it yourself well uh, let's say this is the coordinate system okay so this is the vertical coordinate oh uh, sorry this is the vertical coordinate which represent the shear stress okay and this is the horizontal coordinate which represent the principal stress okay so this represents shear sorry this represent your normal stress sigma okay and this one represent your tau or shear stress okay so what is the more circle for this type of stress condition of course the center is going to be at center okay and radius is going to be sigma okay so this is the radius of sigma and now simply draw it okay that's the more circle okay so now here is the center the center is at 0 0 and radius is sigma okay so what is the maximum shear stress definitely the maximum shear stress is here okay this is tau max and your tau max is simply plus or minus sigma because if you consider this one this is minus sigma and this is plus sigma so that's why i have written tau max at plus minus sigma and to find the maximum shear stress what is the plane with this uh, let's say x axis okay so what is the angle what should be the angle of course this is 45 degree why because here this is 2 theta okay here this angle is 2 theta that is 90 degree and you know that in Mohr circle 2 theta means in real cases this is theta so theta is 45 degree okay so this is the plane let's draw the plane here okay so this is the plane okay where your shear stress is maximum and from this picture you can see that in this location what is your uh, normal stress what is the normal stress value definitely it is zero sigma is zero so in this plane here you can see that the normal stress this one is simply zero okay and shear stress is maximum this one okay this is the shear stress okay this is the shear stress and its value is sigma okay so let's complete the element first okay this is the element and the shear stress is acting like this okay 
because in this location or at an angle of 45 degree it is plus sigma and plus sigma when plus that means shear stress is causing a clockwise rotation okay this is clockwise rotation so here you can see these two stress are causing clockwise but if you consider this one here this is minus sigma so at the complementary faces or at the complementary plane i should say it is let's say this is this one okay and this one is negative that is why it is causing anti clockwise rotation okay so here you can see that this element this particular element that is in gray color it is under the action of pure shear stress only there is no normal stress and this condition is known as your pure shear okay so let us discuss further about this pure shear cases so we will simply uh, taken out this element and we will consider it vertically so first name it let us say this is 1 this is 2 this corner 3 and this corner is 4 so here is 1 okay this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 and this is 4 okay we have taken out this one and let us draw the shear stresses from 1 to 2 you can see this is acting downward in yellow color this is yellow color anti-clockwise okay but in green color 2 to 3 this is clockwise this is clockwise okay so let us say uh, we have fixed this element at base okay this is fixed at base 1 4 and now you are applying a shear stress like this okay so what will happen it will deform like uh, this simply like this okay this is the deformed shape well let me use a white color this is the deformed shape it becomes like this okay so now consider that the length of each arms was let's say l and now this deformation i am denoting this with your orange color this deformation let's say this is delta okay so just consider the tensile cases in the very first relation of strength of materials okay this was p and initial length was l increment was delta so the strain was delta by l and it was simply a number because delta is also let us say meter l is also in meter so epsilon or strain was simply a number clear but here we will denote the strain that is known as shear strain by angle gamma and it is simply your delta divided by l clear so this is known as shear strain a new concept you may take note okay so this is the concept of shear strain so definitely if we know the strain and from hooke's law if the strain is within the elastic limit in that case we can write that our stress okay stress is proportional with strain and the stress here is tau shear stress okay and it is proportional with strain that is gamma okay so we can rewrite this that stress shear stress is equal with g times gamma okay and this g is known as modulus of elasticity under shearing action okay so this is again a new formula okay and initially you have learned about this sigma is equals with e times 
epsilon or strain okay and here this is tau is equal to g times gamma or shear strain okay obviously there is some correlation between this uh, e and g i'll not discuss about the derivation of their correlation just for your information it is uh, simply e divided by 2g can be expressed as 1 plus mu where mu is yes poison so c okay so that's it